Hello and welcome to the fourth part of this series, which covers the most important and basic drum exercises and principles that will help you to get the most out of what you're already practicing, whether you are a beginner, an intermediate player or a pro. If you haven't seen the first videos yet, check the link to the whole playlist in the description. But don't worry, the videos don't build on each other. They each stand on their own, bring you an independent tip that will definitely help you a lot on your instrument. In the last episode, I told you how we can play faster and more precisely at the same time by training our ears. Today, we're going to practice speed and precision as well, but this time in particular, it is about the coordination of all four limbs. And today's exercise will show us that the single stroke roll isn't what we usually think it is. So, let's go. Good limb coordination is often cited as one of the most important skills a drummer should have. What is meant by that? To put it simply, every hand, every foot plays exactly when and where it is supposed to play. And there are the wildest practice systems and books for learning this. But actually, the whole topic consists of only 12 building blocks and I would like to show them to you now. Before that, we need to briefly redefine a term. I just mentioned it, the single stroke roll. When asked what it is, most people say playing ref, uh, right, left, right, left, right, left. But why not left, right and why not right, right? Why not left, left? Why not hand, foot? So the single stroke roll really just means two limbs playing alternate strokes. And we're just playing single strokes today. And there are 12 of them. And those are both hands, both feet, right hand and right foot, left hand and left foot, right hand and left foot, left hand and right foot. Those are only six. But you can start with one limb or the other. And so we have 12 combinations and we're going to play through all of them one after the other. And we play the most obvious ones right, left, right, left, or left, right, left, right, with the hands and the feet last of all. I'll start with a variation, right hand on the snare drum, left foot plays the hi-hat. Especially with such an exercise, you should definitely count out loud because it also challenges your timing a lot. So you practice that at the same time. And it's also about starting exactly on a quarter note. So we need that orientation. But so that you can hear exactly what and where I'm playing, I'll turn on the metronome for you instead. And now, of course, we're going to flip the whole thing around, which means we're going to play the same combination, but we're going to start with the foot and you'll immediately notice that it sounds very different right away. That is why you have to play even more carefully. So this is definitely an awareness exercise. And now in comparison, left hand and right foot.
What's also interesting and a good test is that if you have a double bass drum pedal or two bass drums, you play the same combination of hits two different ways and it has to sound exactly the same. I'll do it with an example. My right half of my body plays hand foot hand foot and then I alternate with my left half of my body and I try to make both sound exactly the same. You can of course distribute this to all parts of the drum kit, but I would definitely say that when you then flip it, you choose the same instrument. So if you play right hand, left foot on the rec tom and the hi-hat, and then left foot, right hand, the other way around, then the right hand should, shouldn't play on something else and also not take the other pedal on the left if you have a double pedal, but play exactly the same instruments because it's all about this subtle difference. We want to calibrate our hearing to know exactly where the 16th notes are and we want to challenge our ability to differentiate, that we distinguish. Is that the 16th, off no uh, 16th note offbeat or is that already the quarter note? And that works best if you compare it exactly with the same instruments, the same sounds. So we notice that this is also a form of auditory tra training, especially when it gets faster, because you often tend to slip into the more comfortable version, the one you are more used to. Perhaps one is more used to starting with the hand when playing hand-foot hand combinations, and that's why, if you have to start with your foot, you always slip into the other variation. Always go back to the tempo in which you can still control it properly, in which you can also hear exactly where the offbeat lies. Speaking of the offbeat, this exercise is a great pre-exercise for the blast beat. So if you want to go into the extreme metal realm, here is a tip. Once again, the blast beat isn't what most people think it is. Many think it's a quick single stroke roll with your hands between your right hand on the right cymbal or hi-hat and your left hand on the snare drum and your foot kind of plays along with it. Strictly speaking, the blast beat is actually a fast single stroke roll between the bass drum and the snare drum. This makes sense because in the blast beat, uh, this usually goes through unrelentingly and when the right hand or the leading hand is more independent, it can play accents on the cymbals. So you should first practice the blast beat by playing a single stroke roll cleanly between the bass drum and the snare drum up to a high tempo. And there too, it is often the case that you have to practice it more slowly than you think, but it will sound much, much fatter, much more confident, much more convincing if you do that. Let me show you. I play the blast beat with both feet on the double bass drum. So I split the bass drum strokes between my feet. Some do it just with their leading foot. Because I'm increasing the tempo now, I'll give you the metronome with my right hand on the rim of the tom. And when I've reached a certain tempo, I'll go, go into full blast beat to show you how it sounds.
So you saw the right hand was now playing accents on the cymbals here, uh, while bass and snare just continued independently. It sounds a lot more confident and convincing than when the right hand has to stay on the right cymbal or the hi-hat all the time because the left hand needs it to play right. Here's what this would sound like. Hopefully not too bad either, but I think it's much better to have this freedom and to be able to emphasize the snare drum. If you don't try uh, train this basic coordination and you're hearing, playing the snare drum louder would confuse you, totally throw you off because you are not used to hearing the snare drum on the off beats. What you also should do is play all these combinations not only in the binary system in 8th or 16th notes but also in the ternary system in triplets. If you now play this combination in 8th note triplets and the metronome continues to run in quarter notes then the limbs always alternate. Sometimes one, sometimes the other then plays on the quarter note. It's also very interesting to be able to control that. This also ensures better timing and above all better timing awareness. Then you can, for example, try both in alternation. And when you've gone through the combinations of right hand, right foot, left hand and left foot and of course vice versa, then I would say you go right foot, left foot next. Even if you have a double pedal or two bass drums, I would recommend doing it on the hi-hat to challenge your hearing again. And most importantly here, the difference between starting with the right or with the left foot. If you have mastered both combinations, only at the very last you go to the two hands. And here too, I would recommend you do it on two different instruments, of course. Maybe the floor tom and the snare drum.
and I hope over time you will get a feel for what I said at the beginning. The single stroke roll isn't what most people think it is. One thing. A single stroke roll means that any two limbs play precisely alternating with each other. That is, playing right hand and left foot alternately is coordinatively exactly the same as right hand and left hand. And if we hold everything up to the same standard, every 12 single stroke roll combinations, so that we only play as fast as we can precisely control it on different instruments, then we train our ears again and our awareness of course. We have seen this in the last video. We pl play much more consciously and much more precisely and as a result we can also play much faster later on. And with these hand-foot combinations we have just laid the foundation for the perfect coordination of all the limbs. So feel free to try these combinations out. Only ever go to the limit where you can still play it precisely, where you can still control the sound and where you can still play it relaxed. As I said, these 12 combinations are the most important basics for your coordination. Of course, this was a bit of an exaggeration that we only have these 12 building blocks because one building block can also consist of hits with three or four limbs and we can also, of course, play several strokes at once with uh, different limbs. We will look at this in a future episode where I will show you a really, really great coordination exercise which was also my warm-up exercise for a long time. But the next episode is about hand and foot technique, my most important tips on how you can play loosely, relaxed and also very fast and with power. So I hope to see you in the next video. In order not to miss anything, definitely subscribe now and also activate the notification bell. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up. This already helps the channel. Thank you very much. Take care and bye bye.